Hi boys and girls and welcome to Art with Miss Tao. Can you believe it's been 10 weeks of distance learning? I miss school. I miss being in the classroom with you guys and I miss creative thinking with you and I miss looking at new artists and talking to you about art and I miss being in the room and smelling the tempera paint and I miss everything about being in school but I especially miss you guys. Um, this week for our art project um, I've decided to do something a little bit different but before I tell you exactly what that is I do want to explain something that I'm very very passionate about something that I really truly believe and that is that art is everywhere <laughs> art is in your garden with how your flowers are arranged art is in the bouquet of flowers that you your mom gets for Valentine's Day art is in your kitchen in the mugs that somebody decided to paint Art is in all the movies and TV shows that you watch. Somebody actually has to decide what it's gonna look like. This video that I'm making for you is an art form. It's not my favorite art form, but it is an art form. I had to decide what was gonna be behind me. I have to decide what I'm gonna say to you guys. And then I have to edit it and make sure that it sounds and looks okay. Art is everywhere. Art is in the photo photographs that you take. Art is on your the cover of your favorite book. You know I love kids books. It's one of the biggest inspirations for a lot of my personal artwork. Art is everywhere and a way that I want to show you that art is everywhere is first I want to show you this Renaissance painter. This artist's name is Giuseppe Arcambaldo and he is a Renaissance painter. That means that he was painting around the time of what's called the Italian Renaissance when artists were emerging from all sorts of parts of Italy. And what he actually does is he uses objects like still lives, but instead of drawing still lives, he creates uh, portraits out of everyday objects. Some of them are a little bit spooky, but he was the only person to be doing something like this at the time. Oh my gosh, what about baking? Baking could be an art form, right? My friend Sylvia bakes cakes and uses something called fondant. Fondant is like an icing that's very moldable. And she uses that to create these beautiful works of art. Here's a couple. I just wanna show you some of the things that she makes. And that kind of really inspired me for our project this week. Yes, we are going to be using food um, as our art media. Hopefully mom or dad or your guardians or brothers or sisters um, can help you with this week's project. Maybe that means that you create a whole dinner and everything has something artistic. Or maybe that just means that your mom gave you string cheese and carrots for lunch and you create that, you use that to create hair. Or maybe you make stuffed peppers that are shaped like pumpkins. Whatever it is, I just want you to use food as your inspiration. Um, now before you go a little crazy, there are a few um, ideas that I've posted in the Google Classroom and the worksheet that just to give you some ideas that maybe you can do. If you can't do any of those, it's okay. You can always draw a picture and use food as your subject in your drawing or your sculpture that then shows me that you used food as your inspiration. Besides just working with food this week, I challenge you to open your eyes and look for art all around you. You may be surprised that art is everywhere and it may inspire you in ways you never imagined. I'm actually really excited to see what you guys can create and um, please don't forget to submit the Google form and send me pictures if you can. I miss you guys all a lot and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye! Now, I am not the best baker, but I'm really good with simple recipes. So I just Googled sugar cookie recipe and got to work. Um, after finding a good recipe, I got all my mix-ins and started to stir. And I got some food coloring because something told me that I was going to make some tie-dye sugar cookies. Can you see what three colors I used to put in my dough? I bet you guys could guess while you think about what the three most important colors are. That's right, I used yellow, red, and blue. 
Once I had the primary colors, I knew that I could make orange, green, and purple. Afterwards, I started to mold and create my rainbow. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm not a big baker, so this was just kind of me playing around my cookie dough and creating something that I would be happy with. I even made some tie-dye cookies because that's really what I was thinking as I made the dough. I wanted to be sure to also have enough in case I didn't like how these rolly ones came out. Afterwards, my rainbow didn't quite look like a rainbow. The cloud didn't exactly come out how I imagined it, so I got a little jar of icing and decided to make them more cloudy looking. <laughs> it's not perfect, but I did have a lot of fun and I hope you guys will too. 